The first flight was a success, I'll say that, because we took off and we landed. But uh, there were some uh, problems that we encountered and some, some things we discovered that needed to be fixed. Um, but let me go back just a little bit. The airplane is unstable in pitch and yaw. It can't be flown without the assistance of computers. At the lower speeds, it's about neutrally stable, which is almost flyable. One of the bits of information that goes to the computers to help fly that airplane is the air data that goes in the probes on the front of the airplane. And the engineers were afraid that the vibration of those probes on takeoff and in turbulent air might send vibrations to the flight controls and cause them to oscillate. And so therefore, they did not want to use the air data on the initial takeoff. So what we did was we put a bunch of lead in the front of the airplane and made it positively stable, thinking that I could manage the airplane. Uh, it was still not real stable, but it was stable enough that we felt that I could fly the airplane satisfactorily up to 10,000 feet and then turn on the air data information to the computers so that if it did cause a problem, there would be plenty of room between me and the ground to get those things turned off again and bring the airplane back. That was the plan, and that's what we did. We took off, ballasted with lead in the nose so that it was uh, slightly stable on takeoff, which was fine. The rotation and everything was good in pitch. It was that the fact that the airplane started to yaw, and it went out, I, I believe it was six degrees to the left, and then I tried the rudder to, to stop it, and it didn't respond right away, and then it slowly came back the other way and went out to around 12 or 13 degrees the other way, and that's very uncomfortable in an airplane to feel like you're skidding sideways. And uh, so I realized that th this, th this thing wasn't acting the way we expected to act based on the wind tunnel and simulation that we'd done. Actually, I had uh, three switches for pitch, roll, and yaw over on the left-hand console, and the yaw switch I had had extended because that was the most critical one. And I turned on the air data so that it would come to the, through the probes and go to the flight control computer to help me fly the airplane. And it did, it worked fine. There, was no, there were no vibrations or anything like that. But they got turned on a lot quicker than we planned to do because we were gonna go to 10,000 feet to turn them on. Based on that information, we realized that the fins on the airplane, the tail fins on the airplane were uh, considerably too small. The wind tunnel data, I don't know how it was, a mistake was made somehow. Uh, I believe I heard that it, they didn't take into full account the sting that the, uh, the pole that you put an airplane in a wind tunnel on contributes to stability. And I'm not sure that's the case. At any rate, they came up with a figure that they, they said we were gonna be more stable than we really were. So the fins were too small. And that was the big discovery on the, on the first flight. And we flew the airplane six more times uh, in a very limited flight envelope while they were building a new set of fins 50% bigger that were put on the airplane. And from that point on, we had the proper amount of stability. Uh, those were, that was the big thing learned on the airplane. The, the minor problems that we occurred are not minor, really. We had overheat in the tailpipes because the tailpipes were rectangular and in the corners, heat builds up and uh, they reached they they were reaching limited temperatures and we also had the canopy unlock light that came on and that was uh, of concern because if the canopy had come off uh, you get a face full of, of wind and uh, it was marginal about whether you could land the airplane or not uh, and the other thing was that we heard a big thump and that was the blow indoors which were spring-loaded and activated so that it gave enough air for the airplane on the ground, enough air to the engines to run properly, and then as you accelerated, more air came in the inlets and then the, the doors would spring-load shut, making the airplane stealthy because you can't have openings in the airplane and be stealthy. And when they slammed shut, there was two very pronounced thumps that I hadn't anticipated, scared the heck out of me. and but. There was no indication in the control station nor on my instruments, so we continued on with the flight. The flight was only 15 minutes, limited by the uh, temperature in the tailpipe. And that was, that was basically the first flight, yeah.